Good evening. Welcome followers and viewers and welcome Nurul. Today we urgently make this video to call for protests in front of the Turkish embassy on the 31st of July of this year, 2024, due to the fact that Turkey has been kidnapping, deporting, putting in danger our Turkmen activists. Uh, first of all, I would like to call upon Turkey and Turkish government to release our activists. There are so many instances of our activists being abducted and then sent and deported to Turkmenistan. And these are young men mostly. There were women too, but we cannot find the names of the women. But at this point, I will have to just say about the men, the young students mostly. Turkey calls itself our brothers. And at the same time, we don't feel that we have any support from Turkey. We feel as if Turkey has sold us. We feel as if Turkey has forgotten its roots, has forgotten about what Atatürk has done for all of us, for our nations. And Turkey has sold itself to the Mankurts. We call them Mankurts because they are the sellouts. They sell our motherland. They sell our people. They kill our people. And Turkey is a part of it at this point. Uh, it started with Russia. But we all know how repressive and how aggressive Russia is. And we actually call it a terror Russia. Turkey is getting close to becoming an authoritarian regime, as Russia is too. Nurul, if you could also introduce yourself and tell us more what you can share. Definitely. Thank you very much again uh, uh, for inviting. We raise quite interesting and important issues of uh, all concerns unfortunately concerns uh, about the state of democracies, about the politics, about the geopolitics, things that actually mm, influence uh, both short-term and uh, long-term policies and well-being of the people uh, in the countries. We all know that uh, we have de democracies across the borders. Uh, it is much better in terms of cooperation, in terms of uh, goodwill for people. Unfortunately, we have a lot of uh, strange situations where in the same camp, uh, people play differently. Uh, I will start a little bit broader by saying that, for example, in European Union, we have situation with Hungary, which is, uh, you know, uh, also proves that it goes, uh, that lives in the, in the, you know, in the sphere according to European, um, values, but still, uh, tries to maintain this authoritarian ship and, and cooperates with Russia. Uh, same situation is with Turkey. Uh, Turkey is in NATO, but still, uh, you know, we see uh, very in and, and, and location is also it's 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 all, it's in Europe, I mean, basically. But still, we see uh, this wicked uh, authoritarian approaches in 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 managing the country. You know, uh, maintaining human rights record, or should I say, violating human rights record. And situation is is growingly concerning, and it's not only happened overnight. Different people use geopolitical situation uh, to their advantages. Uh, rather than, uh, you know, if we talk about situation with the war going on right now between Russia and Ukraine, where Russia is invading, general understanding, it, it, it's to stop the war. But then we also have some people who who is trying to take advantage of this. Uh, and as you rightfully said, uh, Turkey, for example, is taking advantage of the situation and just copycats uh, Russia, Russia's approach. Uh, and creates troubles for alternative opinion inside the country. So, I mean, uh, uh, rolling back a little bit in the background, we remember statements made by U.S. Uh, uh, Congress in 2021. Uh, uh, I think there was a congressman, Sarbanes, who made, uh, who, who made a statement on behalf of other Congress people uh, to Blinken about the uh, necessity of uh, doing something about uh, human rights violations in Turkey. But there were uh, certain... Um, statements by the president's office, but how effective they are if we see still a violation uh, of human rights. The uh, situation is concerning in this particular moment, uh, you know, people might be suffering like uh, we, we're talking today about situation with uh, folks from Turkmenistan who laid their, uh, let's say, naive hopes maybe uh, with uh, with Turkey as, as, as being more uh, democratic country to 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 shelter them to provide uh, you know, political asylum but uh but what are they getting in it in, in the real sense you know uh what what they, they expect to see but what they're getting is a different situation and it's concerning is because not just because uh, they are threatened 
it's it's concerning because uh, uh, they are uh, getting arrested by authorities. They they are getting into prisons, and from there uh, we see situations where uh, they just we lose track of them. They disappear, and uh, nobody knows what happens to them. So uh, I think we as a civil society we have uh, we have a power, energy, and desire to actually uh, to actually influence the situation. Uh, the worst nightmare for the dictators, it's, it's, it's publicity, it's, uh, it's transparency. They want to do these bad things in the darkness. What we can do is we can use our strongest weapon is to actually uh, make it as public as possible a situation about uh, human rights uh, violations, abductions, uh, and other horrible things that uh, people do against their fellow people. I fully support and I call also on my fellows uh, from Kazakhstan, from other Central Asian states uh, to join their forces and uh, to start uh, protesting. We should support each other. You know, I mean, this is, uh, we should also start thinking, not just uh, let's wait for Ukraine to, to beat Russia and then we will all be happily, you know, building our societies. I don't think it's, it's going to be the case. Uh, nobody is going to help but better than you can actually help yourself. And uh, in this situation, uh, we Central Asian countries, it's uh, over, if we join forces, I mean, uh, Uzbekistan only can, I mean, have 16, 60 million people, Kazakhstan, 20 million people. I mean, it's like easily over hundreds of million of people can join their forces together and uh, strive for their independence. And these are the very important uh, and key steps that uh, that needs to be done in uh, empowering civil society and uh, uh, protecting each other. So uh, we should not be silent. Uh, I fully support, and uh, as, as, a, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be out there in the protest, and uh, you know, we are going to put our message out that uh, we're, we're people, we are concerned. We we lend our hand to our fellows uh, who, who are in the worst situation, wherever they are, uh, hopefully safe. We'll see what happens. Small drop of water cracks the stone. So we just need to start. Uh, we can. Uh, you know, continuously debate about the, these issues. But once you put it out on the streets and you, you make a statement, you make a concern, people start thinking. And again, this is a powerful um, weapon that we have is transparency. I invite everybody to take part seriously. We've been supporting a lot uh, Ukraine, uh, action forces um, to lobby for funding uh, of Ukraine to uh, basically to make them feel stronger, that they're not alone. Uh, and let's say former other former Soviet republics are standing along with Ukraine. So we hope we can also enjoy the same support. And uh, of course, we do invite Ukrainians, Ukrainian activists, uh, even Russian activists. I mean, we don't differentiate. We we have an issue with Putin. We, we're not having an issue with, with ordinary people who suffer from the dictator in Russia. So uh, we're welcoming everybody, uh, pro-democratic forces to, to, to join efforts. Come along and uh, and and, uh, and speak up the issue. Same situations with Kazakhstan also. We'll come to that point, and uh, you remember very well uh, that uh, human rights were violated when the people were shot on the streets. It's not forgotten, of course. Uh, and uh, we will uh, still hold responsible people who did that. And uh, again, one by one, we will support each other, and we will we will resolve these issues. So uh, I guess that's uh, a little bit from my side, and uh, uh, yeah, that's that's. <laughs> that was very informative, Norul. Thank you so much. That was actually more than I could have said. I would like to add here that we not only have supported the Ukrainian activists or Ukrainian cause against the Russians, um, the war criminals, but we also have taken part in the Iranian protests against the Haram Mullahs, uh, against even Hamas. What took place on the 7th of October is something that no Muslim will support if he really is a Muslim. Islam yeah. does not stand for uh, butchering people, raping them, uh, yeah. kidnapping them, none of that. Uh, same thing happened in Ukraine. I mean, basically, that's the same signature that Russia used in Ukraine. Yeah. You can actually see the connection right there. And, you know, all of these evildoers, uh, the coined um, terminology for them is actually just fitting because they really are, all of them, creating the world chaos, wars, murderings, killings, uh, kidnappings. It's just, you name it. There is no other, the, the list goes on and on, basically. And we're all suppressed by it. Not, you know, they say, first they come, come for your neighbor, then they come for you. You cannot stay on the side. You have to choose the sides.
Yep. You have to be here or there. You cannot be neutral. I agree with you that our voice is the strongest tool on this. And if we put it properly and if we use it timely and if we make ourselves heard, I think we can get through. United Nations and these kind of organizations that are becoming the tools of the evil countries, evil like Russia, evil like Iran, why are they in the Security Council? These are the dictators, these are the regimes that have been instigating the wars, the chaos in the world, uh, the killings, the murderings, slaughters. These are the regimes.